All right. Thank you for tuning in with us tonight. Uh, thank you for being a part of this uh, wonderful uh, godly courtship seminar program. And before we do get started tonight, uh, I am Pastor Frank Denisi, and I'm a missionary here in Cebu City, Philippines. And then uh, thank you uh, for that introduction, and thank you for being with us tonight. I would want to greet a few groups specifically before we continue tonight. Of course, the Online Baptist Youth Conference, thumbs up and star and hearts uh, for the for the network, this this Connect Network. Uh, really, we bonded together over the COVID-19 pandemic last year during May really at the height of the lockdown in Metro Manila and the height of the lockdown here in Cebu. But God has blessed us and drew, He drew us together. It was really that God that drew everybody together. We praise the Lord for it. Of course, we also want to welcome the Student Revival. The Student Revival is a network of Bible studies on college campuses all over the Philippines. If you want to be part of the Student Revival Network, it's just sharing Christ on campus, seeing great revivals, for Jesus Christ, soul saved on campus, please do message me directly. I'll be happy to set you up with a network or get you get you guys started and established with a student revival network there in your place. Also, Talamban Youth Outreach, my young people's group, the best youth group in the world. Amen. Uh, thank you for being with us also. And then uh, our, our uh, church, of course, Gospel of Christ Baptist Church. To our members tuning in here in Talamban, Cebu City, uh, good evening everyone. We're talking today about this topic, Seven Steps to Perfect Courtship. Now, in case you're wondering, uh, I have revised this outline and I have made it fit our Philippine audience. I actually got this outline when I was a Bible college student at Pensacola Christian College in Pensacola, Florida. And my pastor down there, Dr. Jim Shetler, this was his original outline. And I believe this will be a great blessing to all of us. Of course, I adapted it and I changed some things. Instead of calling it dating like the Americans do, I called it courtship. Nga pareho lang sa ato dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? So, let's just continue before we get started. But before we do, uh, let me just pray and then we'll dive right in. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for blessing us. And Lord, speak to us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that convictions would be made right now, Lord, and they would be established by Scripture. And we pray that you bless us now, guide us, and bind Satan. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Well, get your Bible, please. Get your King James Bible. Amen. Get your Bibles ready. And we're going to be in the Scriptures tonight. And uh, we're talking about the seven steps to perfect courtship and i believe that each step here is going to be wonderful for you uh i recommend don't take screenshots i want you to take notes use your notebook and fill your notebook as we go along and i believe that this will be a great benefit to you more than screenshots okay so seven steps to perfect courtship here's step number one it is better to wait and know it than to court and blow it it is better to wait and know it than to court and and blow it. Don't uyab dayun. And then all of a sudden you realize it was too early. I, I really messed it up. I, have you ever done that before that you, you literally like the person or guy, you like the girl, and then you courted her, but it was just too early, and now you really blew it. Now you changed the dynamic of the friendship, and the friendship will never be the same. That's because you did not wait on the Lord. Okay? So it's better to wait and know it than to court and blow it. Psalm 62 verse 1 says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. I want to challenge you to wait on the Lord. Wait on God. Look at verse number 2. He only is my rock and salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. So the Bible tells us that he alone must be the reason why you wait. You're waiting for God to move and not just your move. So you're, you're, you're wanting God to guide and direct your relationship. He needs to also guide and direct when it's the right time to make courtship. All right. So it's better to wait and know it than to court and blow it. Here's the Bible verse. My soul waiteth upon God for him cometh my salvation. Look at Psalm 27 verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. If you experience before as a Christian young man, even as a Christian young woman, that you really like that person, the problem is you are just too young. Uh, that's because you didn't wait on the Lord. Your timing was not right. So if the timing is not right, the relationship is not right. 
okay it doesn't mean the person is not right but there's a lot of factors that need to factor into the equation and of course uh, it's better to wait and know it than to court and and then you blow it don't blow it just wait on the lord and have god direct it now if you can relate to step number one for a perfect courtship then put it in the comment section i can relate to that i really messed it up before here's the blessing uh if god really wants you with that person then no matter what you have done to blow it, God will still put that back together. Why? Because you are eternally destined to be with each other. Now, of course, you don't want to abuse that, of course. And the idea behind that is that you're trusting God, that God will provide the right one at His right time and His right person. So don't don't blow it by courting too soon. Make sure you get all your authorities right. Your authorities agree. It is time. Okay na. Okay lang. Walang problema. And then once they do that, then you'll know, uh, Lord, I, I believe that there's no bug bug anymore. That there's nothing in the way. And I'm, I'm ready now to court. So it's better to wait and know it. Wait and know it. If there's a question mark, my father always says, if there's a question mark, you better not remove it unless God removes it. Let me say it again. If there's a question mark, you better not remove it unless God removes it. Let God remove the question mark. You don't remove the question mark. Because sometimes God puts a question mark on something so that we know it's not from Him. So it's better to wait and know it than to court and blow it. Okay, now we're on point number two. You guys are doing pretty good. Thank you for being with us tonight. Step number two, write this in your notes please. Do not look for the right one. Be the right one and you will find the right one. How many of you relate to this? You say, if only I can go to youth camp, then I'll truly find a girlfriend. If, if I can just go to the to, to this conference and congress, and if I can just go, uh, I can find uh, uh, an Uyab, I can find my Nobio, I can find my Nobia. No, 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 no. Don't look for the right one, but focus your energy on being the right one. What does that mean? It means if you are the right one, you are spiritually right, then somebody who is also spiritually right will see you and they'll notice you. Let me say a couple of things. You know what attracts a, a good man to a good girl is not her good looks. That is initial. But what makes a good man stay is the attitude of the lady the attitude of the woman is she walking with god is how's her attitude towards god how's her attitude towards people so don't look for the right one don't make a list some of you have a list and then you cross the list off as months go along then you add people on the list listen that is foolish don't you don't got to do that you can say lord i will erase my list and i want you to put the one person on your list do not look for the right one, be the right one. I'd like for you to focus your energy on being the right one, being in church, reading your Bible, praying, walking with God, and then the right one will find you. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Watch our cross-reference here. A relationship is not based on what you can get, but rather on what you can give. So when you're thinking about the opposite gender for, for, uh, for uh, a relationship, then you must be thinking, what can I give in this relationship, not what I can get? If your attitude is what I can get, you're going to be in for a rude awakening uh, because relationship needs to be 100-100, not 50-50. That means you are giving your all and your best in the relationship and everything is for the honor and glory of God. Uh, do you have in your life what you want to see in the one you date? So here's my question. Um, don't pray for a spiritual person if you're not spiritual. Do it. Does that make sense? Uh, don't be a girl that says, Lord, I pray for a godly man, but you don't even go to church when it's raining. Uh, don't be the kind of girl, uh, guy that you say, Lord, I, I want a godly woman, but then you only text the pretty girls on uh, on your FB and you message them and, and uh, they're very sexy in their pictures and, and, uh, and you know they're not godly, but you still message them anyway. See, do you have in your life what you want to see in the one you date? Have you heard this quote before? Birds of a feather flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. There's a lot of truth to that. So if you are a godly young man, there will be a godly young woman who finds you. If you're a godly young woman, there will be a godly young man who finds you. So don't, you don't got to go out 
climbing all the mountains, looking for the right one. My dear lady, I have traveled from afar to find you, and I've been looking over all the mountains and the provinces of the Bundok to find you. No, you haven't. Uh, God already took care of that, but you need to be what God wants you to be, and then God will give you that right one. Number three, here underneath number two, uh, the closer you get to God, the closer you will get to the one God has for you. And let me say that again. The closer you get to God, the closer you will get to the one God has for you. Does that make sense to you? Uh, are, are you are you getting it so far? Uh, the Bible is so clear to us. The Bible is such a wonderful book, the, the inspired, preserved word of God. Uh, the Bible is so clear that God will not withhold something good for you. He will not hold it. He will not withhold it if you walk uprightly. So the closer you get to God, the closer you will get to the one God has for you. And if you've heard about the triangle, the true biblical triangle of love, uh, that if you're here and she's here or she's here and you're here, then the closer you get to God who's here, then the closer you get to each other. And what a wonderful, beautiful concept to know that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, is He is attainable in your relationship. Uh, what does that mean? It means the closer you get to God, the closer you get to each other. The closer you get to each other, the closer you get to God. And that's truly like a, a, a marriage thing, uh, but it is not. Uh, it, it would not be unbiblical uh, to draw close to God, of course, uh, in a dating relationship. Uh, and also, even before you find that you draw close to God. The Bible says, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. So, how many of you want God's blessing in your pursuit of the right one? Uh, but the idea of the pursuit of the right one is do not look for the right one. Don't climb every mountain, you know, but be the right one and you'll find the right one. Amen? Give me a thumbs up if you like that point number two. So, uh, step number two. Now we're on step number three, uh, the seven steps to a perfect courtship. How you get them is how you must keep them. Take your uh, Bible, please, and go to the book of Ruth, chapter two. The book of Ruth, and then we're in chapter two. Ruth chapter 2 in your Bibles, please. Ruth chapter 2. I want to show you uh, a principle here, uh, really, of somebody who did not, uh, who really wanted to do it the right way. Um, she, uh, some of you guys know of, uh, of Ruth, of course, and you know about her, her upbringing, her background. Uh, but in Ruth chapter 2, uh, let me just uh, open this real quick here. And, uh, and I believe this will be a great blessing to you. So Ruth chapter 2, verse number 8. And while you're going there, you can write these down. Ruth chapter 2, verse number 8. And uh, I'll, I'll get to these in a second here. Okay, good. So Ruth chapter 2, verse number 8. And um, the Bible says here. The Bible says, Then, then said Boaz unto Ruth, Here is thou not my daughter. Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence. But abide here fast by my maidens. So how you get them is how you must keep them. You see, Ru Boaz found Ruth. And the way that he found Ruth, she was a hardworking woman. And uh, she was a godly woman. And when he found her, th that's the way she stayed. Amen? So the idea is that if you get them by being yourself, that is all you have to be to keep them. Think about the love story of Boaz and Ruth. What a wonderful story of the kinsman redeemer. Also an illustration, of course, of our salvation. How Jesus Christ is our kinsman redeemer. And how we do find salvation. Even though we are hopeless, we are Moabite by birth. We are, we are hopeless, worthless, and useless. But Jesus Christ, God in His love, sent Jesus Christ to reach down and save us and wash away our sins. What a beautiful picture of love. Understand this. Love is going to be a choice. It's not going to be an emotion. Emotions change, but a choice is a commitment. Let me say it again. Emotions change, but a choice is a commitment. So how you get them is how you must keep them. If you get them by being yourself, that is all you have to be to keep them. So I'm saying, girls, if you have to blonde your hair to attract the guy and for him to think you're beautiful, then you have to keep blonding your hair the rest of your life. If you have to make your kilai look like McDonald's, you know, like, welcome to McDonald's, your kilai is like that. And you have to, you have to tang tang your kilai and you have to paint it back on with black paintbrush. And that means you have to do that the rest of your life. And kilai is not life, kilai is torture. 
but a physical bond is the shallowest and weakest relationship. That means this, if you're always touching each other, you know, you're playing the Seiko Seiko game, you're always trying to, to, to rub shoulders as you walk, and, and you're even in the church together, and you're always next to each other, you're always tapad, sigi tapad. Hey, listen, a physical bond is the shallowest and weakest relationship. That can even go all the way to sexual, uh, uh, sexual activity before marriage. Now, we believe that's wrong. It's a sin. Sex is made by God for marriage. Listen, who designed sex? God made sex for procreation and fellowship within marriage marriage is the key so sex outside of marriage is not biblical it is a sin and god does not like it god hates it because it messes his picture of the marriage relationship the marriage relationship the marriage covenant is a picture of god's love for the church and uh, we don't really have time to get into all of that, uh, but uh, it's a wonderful concept. Uh, so number three here, avoid obvious temptations to the flesh. Let me read to you Romans 13, verse number 14. Romans 13, and then verse number 14. Okay, if you're still with me tonight, just give me a thumbs up there. Give me some hearts and let us know that you are with us. So Romans chapter 13, and then verse number 14. 14. Welcome everybody tonight for tuning in. We're talking about the seven steps to perfect courtship. And then thank you, of course, for being with us tonight. So Romans 13, verse number 14, the Bible says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. So avoid temptations to the flesh. Young man, don't go in the girl's room. Don't provide a temptation to your flesh. A young lady, don't sit on a, on the same bed where another boy is sitting. Don't ever do that. Don't even be in the same room where there's a bed. Avoid temptations to the flesh. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I hope you understand that. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5.22. 1 Thessalonians 5 and then verse number 22. The Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, if you look under here, conversations, uh, that means texts, Facebook chats, you know, WhatsApp, I don't know, Instagram, whatever you use to chat. Understand about changing the dynamic of a relationship. It will never be the same once you show feelings. That's, that's important. You're going to change the dynamic. Now, that's very important that you do it in God's time and not your time. So, how you get them is how you must keep them. Avoid touching. Uh, let me show you what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 1. So everybody, take your Bible quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse number 1. Let me give you a deep expositional study of a certain word here found in the Bible. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, 1, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So here's what the word good means in, uh, in the Greek. Okay, here's what it means. It means good. So it is good that the man does not touch the woman. Let me give you some wisdom here. Here's the problem. You see, men respond by sight. It's the reason why most men are the ones who are addicted to pornography and not women, yet there are some women, but the majority of course would be men. And it's also this is also important to understand that women respond to touch. So men, uh, they respond to sight, but women respond to touch. It's the reason why God said it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So young men, keep your hands off the lady. Don't offer a free massage. Okay, hey, let, let me let me rub your head, young lady. No, keep your hands to yourself, amen? And young lady, if the guy tries to touch you, then you have permission from me or your pastor or your papa to just smack them and say, don't touch me, you leave me alone, amen? So uh, how you get them is how you must keep them. Let me share to you a funny story about point number three. In college, I had a friend, and this friend, uh, he really liked the most beautiful girl on campus. This girl on campus was an avid cyclist. She was an avid mountain climber, and this guy was not a cyclist. He was not a mountain climber, but he said, I really like that girl so much that, that, that uh, he went, you know what he did? He went and he bought a mountain bike. 
And after that, he went and he took rock climbing lessons. And he's, so he got all this training. And then he said, okay, I'm going to go court her. So of course, what he did, uh, he asked her on a date for a mountain climbing. He asked her on a date for cycling together. He never did it a day in his life. But he started because he liked the girl. It's already been 15 years. And can you guess what they're doing until now? Yes, you got it. They're still riding bikes and they're still mountain climbing together. What does that mean? It means how you get them is how you must keep them. Amen? So, uh, young lady, listen. If you are compromising your church attendance, you only go to church sometimes because you want to laag with your boyfriend sometimes on Sundays. Then when you get married, that's what he expects. He expects you not to be so faithful to your church. And then when you want to be faithful to your church, he'll put you down. He'll say, oh, we have other things to do. Can't you just go next week? And listen, you're going to remember point number three. How you get them is how you must keep them. So if you get them by doing right, then you keep them by staying right. Amen? Point number four. Hope you're still following me. Dating should be a delight and not a duty. Wala kay duty para manguyab. Okay? You don't have a duty for that. Okay? Nobody goes to work and scan their card and say, Alright guys, I'm here to work. Uh, but nobody goes go, go after work. They scan out. All right, guys. I have to scan. Ako ay date. <laughs> Another date na sa ako ng guapang uya, ako ng guapong a boyfriend. Ah, uh, scan na sa. It's duty na sa ko. No, nobody thinks like that. But if you're forcing yourself to get boyfriend or girlfriend, tungod sa pressure sa uban tao, maybe pressure from family members, maybe pressure from from people in church, mga young people. You know what's gonna happen? It's not gonna be a delight. It's gonna be a duty. Have you experienced that before? People are pressuring you and you just don't want to do it, but they're pressuring you. You know, there are people that have gotten married because of pressure. And because they married because of pressure, they become miserable in their life because they're married to somebody they don't really love, but they were pressured into marrying that person. Dating should be a delight, not a duty. Let me explain like this. The purpose of dating is spiritual oneness. The purpose of dating is spiritual oneness. I hope that makes sense to you. A spiritual oneness is important. It means to say uh, that you are united in the Holy Spirit. In other words, you're not, you're not a babag to each other's spiritual growth. You're not hindering the spiritual growth of each other. But together, you're blessing each other. You're encouraging each other to pursue God. And there is spiritual oneness. Physical relationships always bring guilt and shame. So let me say this. A Christian courtship should be more on spiritual bonding, not on physical bonding. Okay? It should not ever be in physical bonding because it is, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So physical relationships, listen carefully, sex before marriage always brings guilt and shame. If it does not bring guilt and shame, unsay problema ni mo. Unsay klase sa ang imong baga ngangang. Amen? Because sex is before, uh, sex is after marriage, not designed before marriage. So a physical relationship always brings guilt and shame, especially if you're a Christian young man and a Christian young lady. Don't have sex before marriage and go to church on Sunday and say, Amen, Pastor, keep on preaching. I'm so blessed. No, you are hypocrite. You are a hypocrite and you are, uh, you are fake. You are plastic. So physical relationships always bring guilt and shame. Pastor, what can I do? I messed up. Go talk to your pastor and pastor's wife. Accept your church discipline. Your church discipline will be one of the best things that ever happened to you. Don't have to hide it anymore. Go talk to your pastor. Get God's blessing back on your life. Uh, the Bible says that if you hide your sins, you cannot prosper. Uh, your sin will find you out. Just go now, confess it, say, Lord, please, I want to get it right. Submit yourself to your spiritual authority and get back in the right relationship with God. But physical relationships always bring guilt and shame. Number three, underneath number four, constant arguing and bickering are signs of immaturity, selfishness, and physical outward or inward guilt. I think about Ganina, 1 Corinthians 7, 1. We talked about it. Romans 14, 22. Quickly go there, please. Romans 14, 22. Romans 14, 22 in your Bibles, please. The Bible says, Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that commendeth not himself. 
in that thing which he alloweth. So be careful on those things that you allow in your life. Constant arguing and bickering are signs of immaturity. Listen, if you're always fighting with your girlfriend, you're always fighting your boyfriend, break up now because that will not stop. There's two problems with that. The first problem is probably because you're too young to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. That's why you argue like children. Or you're just simply not compatible with that person. And if you marry, you will be stuck and you will be trapped and you will have regret that you married the wrong person and now you're miserable. You're always fighting. Constant arguing and bickering are signs of immaturity. Self selfishness. Okay, don't be a selfish person. All right, number five. Thank you for being so good tonight, taking notes and everything. Wonderful. Number five, what they are now, they will always be. Pastor, how can you say that, Pastor? Uh, how can you say that what they are now, they will always be? Don't people change? Yes, the, end, the truth is people change, but only God can change them. You cannot change them. Don't ever think, young ladies, like some, some people think many times, they think that they can change the person. I'll get back to that in a moment here. But basic temperaments are formed long before adolescence begins. Meaning to say that if they're generally in it ulo kind of person, when they get married, that will not go away. That will actually increase. You see, marriage is a magnifier of characteristics and personality. It magnifies them. They say love is blind, but marriage is an eye-opener. Okay? Uh, so... Mag marriage will magnify the good and the bad. If you thought the person was sweet before marriage, they'll be sweeter after marriage. If you thought the person had some kind of problem before the marriage, maybe init ulo, hot temper, uh, bad words, malikas, usahay. But when they get married, you say, whoa, it's a lot worse than I thought. And that's the truth. So what they are now, they will always be. Don't try to make him a husband before God makes him a man. Remember that, ladies. Don't try to make him a husband before God makes him a man. Now, I will say this because many young ladies are often confused. They, they really think that if they can uh, uh, marry this guy, then he's a little bit bugoy. You know, he does. He drinks a little bit of alcohol. But if I marry him, I'm sure I can change him. No, no. That is idolatry. Uh, that is you be making yourself as God because you are not God. Don't ever think, lady, that you have the power to change a man because you have zero power to change a man. But, Pastor, love conquers all. Yes, the love of God conquers all. Not your love. Your love is is Philadelphia love or, or phileo love. Uh, your love is based on convenience, meaning that if the guy is uh, is uh, is good to you then you're good to him but if he's mean to you you're mean to him that's br brotherly love based on convenience that is not the agape love only christ can really give that agape love okay now i hope we can give that agape love back to god and unconditional love back to god but when it comes to people when it comes to horizontal relationships not the di not the vertical one when it comes to the horizontal relationships you're really in for a surprise Marriage does not change a person. It magnifies them, the good or the bad. Many men marry a wife thinking she'll never change, and she does. Many women marry a husband thinking she can change him, and he never does. You know, some men, they, they marry the girl. Wow, this woman is sexy. Woo! Wow, she has great... She's, she is, she's a beautiful woman. Wow, look at that form. And then after four children later, her form is no longer coke. Now it's lift. Okay, uh, it didn't. Now it changed. Now it's a litro. Okay, so don't ever marry the woman because she's because she's sexy, because that will change. Sometimes men who are immature, though they they think women don't change. But ladies, put it in the comment section. Do women change? Do their does their body change over time? Yes, it does. Don't ever marry for that reason. And then woman, lady, don't marry the man thinking he's a little bit bad guy, but. I know I can change him. No, that is wrong thinking. That is making yourself to be God and you are in for a big problem. You are in for a rude awakening because you think you have the power to change him and you're not relying on the power of God to change him. Now, I'm not saying that prayer does not change lives. It does. But I'm saying you have no power to change someone. God does. Here are warning signs. Hot temper, laziness, disorganization, jealousy, possessiveness, Okay, listen, if the, if the boyfriend is like very like uh, uh, possessive, even during a, a dating relationship, I want your password. Give me your password. 
get, get with your email and password. I want to check. I want to make sure no no boys are, are are messaging you. And there's no trust issues there. I mean, there's no trust. There's trust issues. Hey, listen, this this is not gonna work. This is this is bad. Uh, listen, the thing you you need you're gonna need in marriage is trust. If you can't trust each other now, that's not going to grow into trust. That's going to grow into more bickering, more arguing, more quarreling, more away. Okay, so what they are now, they will always be, which really goes back to, I think, point number two, which was what? Which was the way, uh, 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 the way that you get, the way that you get them, uh, the way that you uh, get them is the way that you keep them and also that, uh, that they don't change. So what they are now they will always be so number six guys hope you're still following me every date is a possible mate every date is a possible mate one day you will marry a person that you dated that's not eye-opening is it in other words be very careful on who you date because one of them one day is going to be somebody uh that you marry date only solid committed like-minded christians look at second corinthians 6 14 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Let's go there in your Bibles, please. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. I hope you're marking these together. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? What communion has light with darkness? What does this mean? That means God does not want us unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The word yoke is the idea of uh, you put your neck into the, the stock of the plow. In Cebu, we call it a daro. In, and then the the, the, the the kabayo, or not the kabayo, what's the word? The karaba the, the will he'll pull and then he'll make lines in the in the yuta for, for planting, whatever they're planting, rice or something. And, and, uh, and when two of them work together, they're pushing in the same direction. Uh, but understand this that it is the bible says be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers uh an unbeliever is not a yoke fellow an unbeliever is a different direction a different destiny uh they have a different uh mindset so don't ever entertain listen carefully don't entertain ladies don't entertain an unbeliever young man don't entertain an unbeliever i heard of one christian girl chatting online with muslims I heard of uh, 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 one young man uh, online chatting on chatting online with uh, with some pretty girls from the other barangay from the other national high school. Hey, listen, you are making a mistake. You are only thinking of yourself right now. You have a temporary mind, and the Bible calls that a fornication. The Bible calls that uh, th that is evil. Think about Esau. Esau surrendered uh, an eternal blessing for a temporary pleasure. And that's what you're doing if you're going to pursue that. The Bible is clear that a Christian should only entertain a Christian. A believer should only entertain a believer. That's what the Bible teaches. So don't entertain. It would be unbiblical for you to entertain an unbeliever for Uyab. So date only solid, committed, like-minded Christians. Number three here, the person you date should be an asset to your spiritual life. Or they will be a liability to it. That means they should help you and assist you as you grow as a Christian. Number four, their heart should be so consumed in God's that you must seek Him in order to find them. That means if you're going to find a guys, if you're going to look for a girlfriend, uh, don't pursue her heart. Pursue God's heart. And then when you find God's heart, then if it's God's will, God will give you her heart. Because I guarantee you that no matter what efforts you do, that will not impress the girl until first you pursue God. Pursue God. Because she is no longer the owner of her heart. She has given her heart to the Lord. And God will give that heart to whomever He will. So you make sure that you walk with God. Every date is a possible mate. I hope you're enjoying this tonight, guys. Uh, this is a wonderful concept of what we're talking about tonight. Godly courtship. Now we're on step number seven, our last step for tonight, the seven steps of perfect courtship. I hope this is a blessing to you. Now, this is so important. You know the Bible verse, children honor your parents? Postpone possibilities if parents are not perfectly pleased. Let me say it again. Postpone possibilities if parents are not perfectly pleased. Lots of P's there, isn't it? Uh, but Colossians chapter 3 verse 20. Let's read it together, please. Colossians chapter 3 and then verse number 20. 
Colossians 3, verse number 20. Look what the Bible says, please. And mark it in your Bible, please. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Now, I know that guys and girls are a little different. Usually guys, when they're about 18, they get a job, and many of them even move away from home and start working, and they're, they're on their own. But the girls are a little different. Why? Uh, because we live in an evil society. You don't want the girls running around at night, and, and you know, a very dangerous situation. You try to avoid that. If you're the father, you don't want anything bad to happen to your daughter. Uh, but I would say this. You, that you always honor your parents no matter what age you are. You always honor them. You always obey them no matter what age you are. And the Bible says that when you get married, the Bible says the husband shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And that is God's intention. That is God's plan for marriage. And it's not a bad plan. It's a good plan. It's a wonderful plan because God made the plan. So postpone possibilities if parents are not perfectly pleased if dad says no then stop it hold it if mama says no then you better stop it you hold it because you're gonna miss God's blessing on the relationship I heard of one pastor he was courting his his wife and they want permission to get married but the father of the of the of the girl is an unbeliever he said no so the woman said uh, I have to break up with you. My father said no. And she said, but I still love you. I still like you, but we have to wait on the Lord. And he said, you know, you're right. Let's fast and pray that God will save your father. So a few months later, uh, the girl was with her papa and then her father said to her, do you still like that guy? She said, yes, papa, I still do. And then he said, well, I give you permission that you guys can get married. He's a, he's a good man. He'll take care of you. And he did that because he loves his daughter and he wants his daughter to be happy. And uh, I can't say all situations are like that. Eventually, the father was saved also. And that could happen to you in your relationship. But be somebody uh, that respects the authority of the parents. Don't go against the authority of the parents. You don't just marry a person, but you marry a family that's so important you don't marry a person you marry a family number two postpone any relationship that your father and mother do not approve of I already mentioned that earlier so if dad says no then young lady don't TNT don't tago na tago uh, young man if God doesn't if, if God says no he'll let you know through your mama your mama is a good filter she can tell you um, she can tell you if that's a good girl or bad girl Amen? She can even tell you that's a good girl for you or a bad girl for you. Sometimes mama will know if it's a good girl for you or a bad girl for you because she knows you. She's your mama. Remember, she used to breastfeed you when you were a bata, when you were a baby. <laughs> so trust your mama and papa. Number three, girls, let your father be your protection. Guys, let her father be your guide. And I will say this, one of the greatest blessings that you can have is to have her father on your side, young man. Amen? Be a friend to her father. Because he might be, he might be the one to say, "Hey, it's her, it's her birthday coming up. She likes teddy bear," and he will, and you want him on your side, amen. Especially anybody who's a daddy's girl. So, girls, let your father be your protection. Guys, let her father be your guide. Okay, if parents are not God fearing, your submission to their authority may be what Christ uses to bring them to Himself. I hope this is a blessing to you tonight. Uh, let me just say this by way of ending, by way of closing, and then I have a bonus lesson for you, which I'll just share after this. Jim Elliot said, God always gives his best to those who leave the choice with him. God always leaves his best to those who leave the choice with him. You don't have to go out and choose somebody to court. Let God do it for you. God will take care of it for you. Hey, did you choose where you were born? No. Did you choose your gender? No, God did. Uh, did you choose your mother and father? No, God did. So why do you choose your spouse? Let God choose that. God knows exactly what He's doing. He knows exactly what you need. And listen, you're backsliding because of Uya, because of Nobya, because of Nobyo. That will be because you don't trust God. It all comes down to trusting God. Are you willing to let God take care of your love life? I hope you are. I hope that's a blessing to you. Well, before we end today, I have a bonus lesson I want to share with you here, and I think this will be a help to you. So, reminder for singles, okay? God has not forgotten you. 
he is preparing you okay it's one of the biggest lies that satan does that tells christian singles is god forgot you know god did not forgot forget you, you uh, your single season should not be wasted in the wrong attitude but bloom where you are planted don't ever question god's goodness because that is toxic thinking trust god fall in love with god above all find your contentment in jesus christ let Jesus Christ be your all in all. Let Him be everything that you ever needed. Say, Pastor, this is all good. The problem is, I'm already in a bad relationship. I don't know how to get out of it, Pastor. You know, I mean, bad relationship means unbeliever. You have a relationship with a guy who's an unbeliever. I heard of one guy, he has a relationship with a, with a girl that's an unbeliever. And she always puts down his church, Baptist. Mm, Baptist, Baptist, Monica. She always puts it down. Do you think that would be a good mother for your children? No, it would be. It would be in perno. It, by the way, wala ko nagtuo sa purgatorio, pero purgatorio mana. If you're going to marry a woman like that, you're going to be in purgatory. Young lady, if you're going to marry a guy like that, you're going to be in purgatory. And even purgatory is not real, but that's going to be the closest thing to purgatory. So how to break up properly? Take notes. Here we go. Do it quickly. It will only get harder every day. If the longer you wait, the harder it will be to buwag. The harder it will be to bulag, to break up. So make sure you do it quickly. How to break up? Do it. How to break up properly? Here you go. Do it quickly. Do it tomorrow. You know it's a wrong relationship. It's a toxic relationship. It's an unbiblical relationship. It's an unapproved relationship. You know it's wrong. The only reason why you're there is because of your lust and because of your lack of trust in God. Do it quickly. Break up quickly. Get to the point. Don't try to slip it in a conversation. Don't be like, yeah, my goodness, I like those Lakers. LeBron James, guys. I like Steph Curry. Oh, by the way, let's break up. Don't do that. Because you don't slip it into a conversation. No, get to the point. Say, hey, I called you today because I want to just get straight to the point. Uh, I I'm going to break up with you. We're going to cut off our communication. That's so important. Whenever you break up, you cut off the communication. Does that make sense? That's very important because truly you are not truly broken up if you're still chatting and texting and calling and video calling, video chat. Hey, listen, that is not breaking. That's not breaking up. That's just that's just breaking up in in words, but the actions are the same. So get to the point. Be positive. This is the best thing for both of us or we've learned some things we've you know if you you helped me to grow spiritually thank you so much uh you know and and i was able to help you also thank you so much uh, be positive okay don't be negative in the breakup number four be firm do not let the person talk you out of it but oh sige na, uh, just let's just stay together long and okay sige, sige na lang. Uh, i'll go to your church with you uh, i'll go to your church with you i'll every sunday i'll go to your church yeah uh, they'll go to your church every sunday but it's all plastic it's fake they're doing it just to make you happy men pleaser sha delete sha god pleaser so be firm break it off by the way tell your mom and papa too that you're going to be doing it number five be final do not make conditions or agreements to get back together don't say like, hey, uh, let's just cut off our communication in six months. Uh, chat balik after six months and after six months, uh, let's just see where we are after that. No, no, don't be final. When you break up, do it properly. Be final. Don't leave a door open. Don't leave a door unlocked. I'm talking about weld the door shut. Amen? Bolt the door. Be final. Six, be prepared. They might not take it too well. If so, it's just more proof that you needed to do this. I heard of one girl that she broke up with her boyfriend. Uh, he was an unbeliever. And the guy committed suicide because he was so uh, distraught because that girl was his life. So when she broke up with him, he killed himself. I, I, I will say this. If that's, what he, if that's the way he was thinking, then it would have been much worse to be married to somebody like that. I believe that God saved her from a life of torture, a life of mental abuse. Be prepared, mga kaisunan. Be prepared. Number seven, don't waste the lesson. Don't waste the lesson. Remember that. God, remember the good and the bad and learn from it. Learn from it. Okay, don't waste what God taught you. God taught you a wonderful thing and you don't have to waste it. Well, take a screenshot of it right there. Take a screenshot right there. One, two, three, screenshot. 
All right. I hope that you enjoyed our lesson today. This is the seven steps of perfect courtship. Is any courtship perfect? No, because we're a bunch of people who are not perfect. But I will say this. I will say that God has a perfect story he's writing for you. And all you have to do is trust him to write that story. Yes, maybe your single season might be a little bit longer than some other people's single season. Uh, but don't be afraid to trust God and find your contentment in Christ. Fall more in love with Christ every day. Is your courtship going to be perfect? No, of course not. Nobody's perfect. But God is perfect. And God knows exactly who you should be with, when you should be with that person, and how you're going to uh, get closer to that person. So trust God. Fret not. Can continue to put your faith in what God is doing. Remember, God does not uh, uh, God does not make mistakes. God do God does all things well, and God will honor who honors Him. God bless you guys, and have a good night.